take your order? Can I get a cheeseburger, please? And a... you, you said cheeseburger? Truett Cathy was a C student. When he decided to get serious about his future, he opened a diner with his youngest brother. Only two years later, he lost him and another sibling to a plane crash, and later, his second diner burnt down in flames. Afterwards, he was forced to take out a loan and start over a third time. When customers walked out, he took his mother's fried chicken recipe and created Chick-fil-A, an $11 billion fortune. Surviving the Great Depression, 46 years before the first Chick-fil-A restaurant opened. In 1921, Truett Cathy was born in Edenton, Georgia, to a family of seven children. When the Great Depression hit, they moved to a public housing project in downtown Atlanta. By then, Truett's father's job as an insurance salesman was no longer enough to support them. So their mother welcomed boarders into their tiny one-bathroom home to make ends meet. Truett helped her by making the beds and cleaning the bathroom. When he was free, he watched her prepare many dishes, including a traditional southern-style fried chicken. Later, Truett took up several odd jobs to help support the family. He sold Coca-Cola bottles, delivered newspapers, and even gave out peanuts. Eventually, he became the primary breadwinner in the family. But as he excelled at work, his studies took a back seat. He became a C student who didn't have any confidence in himself and even questioned his social abilities. It seemed like other people had more talent than I did. We used to share reading books and the person reading with me got ahead. I just couldn't understand. After high school, he never got the chance to redeem himself in college. He was drafted in the US Army during World War II. When he was honorably discharged, he and his brother Ben decided it was time to get serious about their future. At the time, small 24-hour diners were popping up all over the country. They had a gut feeling that they could succeed in the business and decided to open one together. To come up with the money, Truett sold his car and took out a loan. With a total of $10,000, he and Ben opened a diner called the Dwarf House because of its size. There were only four tables and 10 stools. The business grew quickly, but not without sacrifice. They alternated between 12-hour shifts and only took Sundays off. I exhausted myself, but it was a temporary price to pay for the future. Years later, the Cathy brothers discovered God had different plans for them that changed the course of their lives forever. Losing everything overnight, twice, 25 years before Chick-fil-A tripled in size. One Saturday, Ben and another brother Horace flew a small plane to attend an air show in Tennessee, but they never made it or flew past Georgia. The plane's motor broke down and crashed. None of Truett's brothers survived. The loss hit me particularly hard on Monday morning. When I saw Ben made the report sheet on Saturday afternoon in good health, I realized that he would never be back, and tears flowed. With a wife and young child, Truett had no choice but to continue business as usual. He also felt obligated to ensure his brother's wife and niece were taken care of for the rest of their lives. From then on, Truett's wife Jeanette worked countless hours in the diner. Together, they created a warm family atmosphere that helped the business grow. Only two years later, they managed to build a second diner in Forest Park, Georgia. But overnight, their budding empire was cut in half. During the wee hours of a cold morning, their second diner blew into flames. By sunset, it was destroyed. Insurance alone wasn't enough to rebuild it. I faced some tough questions. Do I take a giant step back to just one restaurant, which would mean having to lay off employees? 
Do I incur more debt and rebuild the restaurant as it was? Or is it time for something new? Truett was convinced it was time for something new. So he took out a $90,000 loan and opened his third restaurant. This time, he introduced a cafeteria-style self-service concept. At the time, many Americans were used to being served by waiters. Still, a national trade magazine praised Truett's concept as being visionary. But only one hour into opening day, Truett realized he made a big mistake. Where are the waitresses in our coffee refills? Customers asked as they walked away. They hated the new concept. For three months, Truett was unsure about what to do. So he consulted a friend and restaurant owner, Ted Davis. You will lose customers, but you'll gain others, Ted advised. But if it bothers you, I'd like to lease your building and buy your equipment. Truett considered his offer a sign to take a much needed break and agreed. He learned the hard way that it isn't easy retaining customers and that along with quality, customer service remains key to success. Turning waste into opportunity. 32 years before Chick-fil-A opened its 500th location. For years, the first and last standing dwarf house mainly served hamburgers until Truett received an unexpected visit. Two brothers named Jim and Hall Good asked if he would be interested in buying boneless, skinless chicken breast pieces from them. The poultry shop owners initially prepared them for Delta Airlines, but they were too big to fit on the meal trays, so the airline tossed them away. What could I do with these? Truett thought to himself. Immediately, he remembered his mother's southern fried chicken recipe. She would marinate the chicken overnight and then use pans to pressure cook them in peanut oil. Truett experimented with the recipe for four years until he found the perfect combination, a boneless breast of chicken, seasoned to perfection, hand-breaded, and served on a toasted buttered bun with dill pickles. He called it Chick-fil-A. The last letter represented grade A, the highest ranked chicken available. At the time, many Americans considered a chicken sandwich odd since they were more interested in a hamburger. On average, they ate 50 pounds of beef annually. But when they tried Truett's Chick-fil-A sandwich, they were hooked. It soon outsold his hamburgers and was sold by the Good Brothers in exchange for a royalty fee. Even McDonald's considered selling them, but lost interest. Meanwhile, the Houston Astrodome signed an agreement to sell them. From then on, it took off. Within a matter of weeks, 50 other restaurants joined in. Truett was on his way to rebuilding his empire, but still wasn't happy. The restaurants did not follow his instructions or maintain quality. Fortunately, his sister Gladys suggested an idea that would involve taking more risks and potentially a bigger payoff. Challenging the status quo, 33 years before Chick-fil-A became the third largest restaurant chain in America. You need to open a Chick-fil-A restaurant, Gladys pointed out. At the time, she ran a gift shop in the Greenbrier Shopping Center, and inside was a 384-square-foot vacancy, the perfect size for Truett to start small. While Gladys convinced Truett to apply for a lease, he struggled even to be considered. Just like his chicken sandwich in the early days, a shopping mall restaurant was seen as odd. Developers were hesitant about the idea. They had a tea shop in Sears and a coffee counter in Woolworths and thought fast food would be a smoky mess. Not one to give up, Truett convinced the developers to take a chance on him. In 1967, the first Chick-fil-A restaurant opened. Within the first week, the business started making a profit. From then on, dozens more opened within mall food courts, a first for the fast food industry. But Truett didn't celebrate just yet. He discovered that the business could make a bigger profit outside of food courts. Over two decades later, he opened Chick-fil-A's first freestanding restaurant on North Druid Hills Road in Atlanta. While it was difficult to go from renting space to buying land and constructing buildings, the business experienced steady growth. Truett didn't touch a single dollar until there was more than 10 locations. His insistence on being cautious and avoiding more debt paid off. 
In 1993, Truett opened his 500th Chick-fil-A restaurant, pushing the business into competition with KFC and other fast food chains. And by 2006, sales surpassed $2 billion. Today, Chick-fil-A is the third largest restaurant chain in America, earning the Cathy family an $11 billion fortune. It surged past Wendy's, Burger King, Taco Bell, and Subway within just one year. And even though it remains closed on Sundays and loses $1 billion annually, its sales per store is higher than any other chain. Now, competitors are taking note, including one that turned down a partnership in the early days. McDonald's franchise owners recently signed a joint letter urging the company to add a Southern-style chicken sandwich to its menu. But along with Chick-fil-A's secret recipe, the company's unmatched customer service has helped them outrun competitors for years. In an interview, Truett shared one of his secrets to success. I believe that you must have a tremendous amount of faith in what you want to do. You must be determined to make it no matter what the circumstances. In the past 60 years, no matter the ups or downs, I have learned that the number one thing to do is to please the customer and they will come back. This is the story of how a C student who faced a series of tragedies turned his mother's southern fried chicken recipe into an $11 billion fortune. For more inspiring stories and advice from today's most successful leaders, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.